Okay. So, I, oh, that's bad. We have to switch seats. You're too backlit. Is that okay? May I call you Bruno? Yes. Bruno, my name is Pam. I was thrilled to be able to be in your talk this morning. Um, plenary session, my ass. That was just great. Some of the best news I've actually personally heard ever in my life, so thank you. Um, your talk was amazing. I wanted to ask you specifically, um, you said something about the time it was going to take to get to exabyte computing might be 11 years, or that there was an 11-year cycle. Um, do you think we'll get there in 11 years, before 11 years? Are we close to that anyway? Uh, so if you look in the past, uh, the, the schedule that all this has been uh, quite accurate. Okay. And so we assume that it will be on time. So on a cycle. The exa, yes. Okay. But uh, the current technology, uh, the chip scaling, wouldn't allow that. Okay. So uh, we need to invest a lot into packaging in order to make it happen. But uh, the push on the industry to keep the schedule is quite high. So, so we, we are still positive that that will happen in 11 years. I think the push from everyone should be quite high. Let's make it happen. Um, I actually heard you say that if people want to invest in the technology, well clearly IBM is investing in the technology. I'd be willing to bet everyone who's doing cloud and virtualization is willing to invest in the technology, right? Those are your clients, or they should be. Yes? Sorry. Uh, um, all of the cloud computing people are here. Yes. The big ones, the biggest ones. So you think they're all going to want to invest in the technology? Yes, uh, of course. So they, they will want uh, to have their data centers more efficient. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, I think uh, cloud computing is also a, a shift from distributed computing into a, a computing which is taking place in the data centers. Right. Uh, and uh, if we can reduce the cost of computing in the data center, that, that's what they want. We're, we're rapidly approaching the smallest possible numbers, right. I think, on that. If, you're if everything you say is true, we're getting closer and closer, and that's Remarkable. I'm, I'm really just amazed, really amazed. Um, have you enjoyed presenting at Lisa? Yes, uh, that, that was very interesting, and, and of course, I, uh, I'm new to the data center community. Okay. Uh, my background is packaging, so uh, it's interesting for me to uh, um, talk to these people and understand what their problems are. That's and, uh, great. Try to help them with this sure the So, you actually have probably made some good connections here. Yes, that, that's good. Did you learn anything? Uh, and, uh, okay, I, I just came yesterday, so I. Okay. That's fine. It's fine. What I learned just a little bit was that even someone who's doing that level of research said if there's commercial interest in my technology. Mr. Michel, <laughs> no question. <laughs> So yes, there is clearly uh, there is clearly interest in technology, mm -hmm. but still it's a problem to uh, accelerate it, and, yes. and we have to accelerate it fast mm -hmm. because if we want to do something for the climate, we have to do it right now, and 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 therefore it's a challenge. Okay, I have to say your numbers and your statistics were great. I did I should have had my laptop so I could have written them all down, but I'm looking very much forward to the slides. I think everyone at the conference probably is as well. They were just knockout. And, and even the, you made them relevant to things that people could understand, which is brilliant. Um, I hope that it's publicly distributable. Is it? Yes, uh, so I, I have uh, distributed the slides. And uh, to your question, it, it really was even astonishing for us. Okay. If you, if you have a paradigm change, mm -hmm. then you have to start looking at things in a completely new way. Absolutely. And, and even technical experts are astonished. Even our own technical experts. I believe you. Um, I really, one of my favorite parts of your talk was how you described, as a biophysicist, the whole um, how human capillary systems work and then how the silicon ones work, or whatever we're using works. Um, it's a personal pet area of interest for me because my best friend's a bio, she says biochemist, she does yeah, computational yeah. chemistry modeling. Um, yeah. But it's nice for me to see that those lessons from humans are being applied to such high level things and working. Yes, yeah, so I think the best discoveries are not made in a specific subject, mm -hmm. but always in between. So if you can uh, have something from biology, physics, chemistry and engineering, mm -hmm. the solution will be better than if it only comes from one single subject. Absolutely. So you've enjoyed taking your biophysics and now applying it to this type of research. That was uh, very exciting. Of course, of course. Well, it's very thrilling. Um, her own personal project a few years ago was on bacterial rhodopsin for storage. Yes. Have you seen it? Uh, of course I know bacterial rhodopsin and, and uh, I know that it can be an interesting uh, uh, system for enzyme. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I have 
been uh, uh, working uh, in my PhD thesis on redox enzymes. Oh, cool! Yeah. Well, I gotta read that. <laughs> I'm sure that we can uh, look you up. <laughs> okay, at this point, I'm going to let you go and enjoy speaking to others, but thank you so much for the great talk and the personal information. That was great. Thank you.